Hello there, how are you doing? Back of the solar farm. And I'm doing a camp here tonight. I like this place because, not only because I work here and because there's a shop and stuff like that, where I can buy some foods, but also because it's relatively close to where I live. And also I'm going through to Filey tomorrow and this is kind of en route. Yeah, I'm gonna spend the weekend with my mum. And I wanted to get out because I've got a setup that I want to test out. So I'll show you that later. But first of all, it's time to get over there into the shop and get some food bought. While I'm meandering over, I will just thank Matthew, the owner of the Bloom Tree, for letting me do one of my madcap camps here again. Thanks, Matthew. We're going to have another go at the Yorkshire Burgers, only we're going to get it right this time. Hi there. Hello. All right. Yeah. Do you need a bag? Yes, please. Just one? Yes. All right, that's supply sorted. And I haven't made that mistake I made last time where I didn't get something to nibble and drink while I was setting up. It is starting to rain. We have forecast for some rain. So I am going to have to get a bit of a wriggle on. A little bit wet and cloudy. Now, I've got all my gear here. The mistake I made last time was, you might recall me mentioning about these gaps here and realizing that I had the bed set up wrong. But well, what I also didn't realize is water also drips through these cracks here. So if I position the bed long ways that way, then you're still going to get wet. So I've got to rethink it. And I have a plan. Let's get set up, eh? Right, so I've got the tarp set up. What I've done is I've just strung it, tied it underneath the edge of the, uh, the solar panels and uh, this little beam's a little bit in the way but ultimately what it means is any water that drips down now drips onto the tarp and runs away. I might just need to tighten this side up a bit, the guy lines on this side up a little bit. I think I'll do that first. So I'm out in the high gear bed again using the high gear bed and I just hope that I've got a bit of headroom, enough headroom for what I'm going to set up tonight. <laughs> For tonight. Let's get this set up anyway. Now what I've got in here, it's another army surplus one. This is a Dutch army mesh tent. And this is actually geared for use on one of these beds or on the floor. And naturally you do need some kind of cover over it because it's a mesh tent. It's just like being out in an inner. Uh, the difference between this and say like the DD ultralight one is yes this weighs a bit heavier but with that DD ultralight one you're going to need to buy another ground sheet whereas with this you won't so I do think some of those ultralight ones they're not quite what they say they are whereas with this this is actually all you need no ground sheet required if you're going to be pitching it on the ground however tonight it's going on here At least I hope it is. So there is a zip on this and the zip's on, I've made sure that the zip is on that side. And that means this is probably gonna be the head end and this the foot end. Gotta get the poles in first though. I haven't used these for ages, tent poles. I've done a quick check and a setup of this at home. It's all in good fettle and good order. Always pays to before you come out in army surplus gear is just at least check it out because uh, well it's been used hasn't it in the field quite literally the poles go across from one side to the other and these have a little kind of long stretching so you can actually stick these into the ground as part of the peg formation but uh, they have that loop and eye thing so it just goes in there actually you're an idiot Cal because you need to feed it through first. Get it about halfway. 
Down in. Oh, it's going to be high enough. Excellent. Fab. Right, let's get the other one in. I thought this might be quite good in summer in certain places. So that you've got the benefit of a bed and being off the floor whilst also having something to keep the midges and mosquitoes off because they do love me but I don't love them that's it all hooked on let's tie the centerpiece across oh I've realized where I've committed a fail because <laughs> I was going to guy this out but I've just realized I actually haven't brought any lines Good job I've brought some additional rope. Plus it gives me a new opportunity to try out my new knife. This is a Camillus camping knife called the Black River. And I do really like this. Actually, while I'm working away, I did get some beer. This is a Rudgate Brewery Valkyrie, an American pale ale. And I also got a filthy, I mean look at the size of that beast, filthy, this is a hog roast scotch egg, I just fancied a little bit of, oh, I do love a good scotch egg, that's a beast, that's just pure pork, rather than sausage meat, oh that is delicious, so these ropes don't have to be too long because they only have to go from the bed to the floor just to tie it in place. So that's four loops. Now it's just a case of tying these on. And there. Oh, actually, <laughs> that feels pretty good on there. <laughs> yeah. I like that. This little flappy bit at the end, I'm assuming, is to put your boots in. So I'm just going to have that hanging over the edge. Right, let's get the airbed in. I'm using tonight the X-Bed down mat. And <laughs> I got this because it was recommended by people on a, on a Facebook forum. And uh, yeah, it's really good. And because it, it's full of down, so it's um, quite well insulated. What I'm surprised about is, obviously I've just inflated it, so there's the bar, there's the mat, and it's the same on the other side, bar and mat, and it just fits in between the bars on this beautifully. So even without the mesh tent, I think this would actually be an ideal mat to go on this bed. Just got to see how comfortable it is. But <laughs> it looks alright. Fully set up now. I'm delighted to say I'm out in Old Faithful tonight. <laughs> the Dutch Army M90. Oh God, I love this sleeping bag so much. Last couple of times I've been out in the British Army um, Arctic bag, but for me, nothing beats this Dutch Army setup. I love it so much. So I've got my little pillow in there and uh, my gym jams, <laughs> and then the little memory foam pillow at the top there. I think that's going to be damn cosy tonight. Oh yeah, I really do. Still raining a bit. I think I'm just going to chill for a little bit. I've got to say, <laughs> I keep coming back to this tent and looking at it. And I do actually really like it. This is another one of these things. So it's got three zips here, look. So it goes up, across, and up. So it's across both ways at the bottom and up. Right, and at the top here, look at this. I think you can see that. There's a nice little mesh pocket. There we go, look. Look at that nice little mesh pocket. So that when you're laid in bed, you can put your mobile phone in there, stuff like that, or just a keys, whatever, something you want to keep out of the way. At the back there, there's another pocket. A really big one. Yeah, it's quite cool. Anyway, I'm getting a bit parky. It's uh, been raining pretty consistent. 
and I think I'm going to uh, work out which way the wind blowing. I think it's blowing that way. I think I'm going to set. I don't want the wind, the fire blowing onto the onto here, so I'm going to set the fire up. Probably there. Love this knife. Took a little bit of getting going, did that one. But we're off. <laughs> oh yeah. It's 20 past six just after. The lantern is lit. The beer's going down well. And the fire is roaring. I did have to move it actually because I had it set up on the wrong side. The wind is blowing across slightly in this direction and it was the sparks. I was worried about the sparks underneath the tarp. So I think you can see tarp, the wind's blowing slightly in that direction. So it's blowing it away from the tarp, which is what we want. It's starting to calm down a bit, actually, the wind. It's been a little bit feral, <laughs> a bit windy and wet, but it's just starting to calm down a bit now. I'm not overly hungry yet because I had that big scotch egg but I did need to get the, get the fire on, get some embers going so that I can at least consider cooking. It is nice. Oh, fire's raw, it's lovely. It's good to be back out. And I am looking forward to trying that, uh, yeah, that tent on the bed. <laughs> See how that works out, eh? I think it might be time to get tonight's hat out. Now this is a bit of a special one. I wonder if somebody remembers this. <laughs> what it's like to have hair, eh? This was actually a present from oldest friend many moons ago. <laughs> and I actually found it in a cupboard the other day. I was actually sorting some stuff out, uh, some surplus camping gear and clothing and stuff like that to go to the Ukraine war effort. I came across this in the cupboard and I didn't think, I thought, well, nobody's going to want this. And then I thought, well, actually, kind of a fun thing to wear while I'm out doing daft stuff on a winter's night, eh? <laughs> I don't think it's quite going to have the same ear warming effect as the, uh, as the Spaniel's lugs hat. Never mind, it's, uh, it'll do the trick. <laughs> it's a bit different. Probably going to tick me off more than anything. <laughs> But it's a bit fun. And I better not stick my head too far over the fire. I might end up looking like Michael Jackson. <laughs> bit of fun, eh? Oh, darling. <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd just bring you in for a closer look at the mop hat. <laughs> Cheers, oldest friend. Let's do some shout outs. I've actually made a list. I thought it might be easier if I make a list. There's just too many people now. So I've already mentioned all his friend, Roadkill, Bobby Dazzler, and uh, Balloon Boy, Ollie, Ollie Webb of Yorkshire Balloon Flights. Okay, here we go. Top fan Brad, Mart, no ducks. To actually, I did see a duck earlier on fly overhead and I wondered where it was going and I thought about you. How's Mark in Gatorland? Haven't heard from you for a while, Mark. I hope you're okay. Claire, how are you doing? Hope you're well. Simon, have you been out in the Story Kayak yet? I'm itching to know. Simon actually has picked up geocaching since he's been watching my videos, which is cool. There's, I had a few people just recently who said they've started geocaching as a consequence of that, so that's quite nice. David, John Ruffles, he wanted to mention a couple of times ago. Graham, who's just bought an Oru folding kayak. Hello, Graham. Keith, Yaka's dad, Mick, Matty, Dave, who was awaiting his story. Jamie, Gareth, Jeff, Henry, Yorkshire MG Tower. Thought that was an unusual one. And uh, hello to all you subscribers, new and old. Hope you're all well. And uh, yeah, please 
feel free to drop by and say hello in the comments. What I want to do is I want to mention a few people who've got their own channels as well, like Des Green. Uh, if you like hiking videos, you might like Des Green. So I'm going to start promoting a few of these on my Facebook page. And I've already done Des's. Uh, John Pawson, John Pawson, a uh, Yorkshire bloke. Found him, he rides Himalayans. I can't quite, I think he commented on one of my videos and I started looking at what he does. Really nice chap. Uh, he rides Himalayan motorbikes. Quite enjoyed watching his videos. Uh, Lee, the Cockney kayaker. Spoke to Lee the other day because he's just bought a story kayak. So we had a chat on the phone about the, uh, the pressure valves and uh, the pressure um, inflation rates for story kayaks. Norman Granger. Uh, he's a geocacher in the States. Hi, Norman. Geocaching with Geocaching Granger, I think, is his channel. Nick's Explorations. Nick, who lives in Filey, oddly enough, who goes exploring old World War II bunkers and the, the likes, who's also recently just bought a kayak. And some of the channels that I watch a lot of, I watch The Scottish Wanderer. Very entertaining, very down to earth bloke. Hayes Outdoors, Leeds lad, really nice, cracking down to earth bloke. Mr. Wild Wales. Now, I do like Adam, I like his stuff, and I like I like the fact that he goes out with his mate Drufus and they have a bit of a laugh together. Uh, and that, it just reminds me of me, oldest friend and roadkill when we're out doing daft stuff. There's another one I found recently called Off Camping. A uh, chap called Billy, who does a lot of crazy uh, roundabout stealth camps, that kind of stuff. Hidden Valley Bushcraft. Uh, Nick, he's a ex-Marine Forces, quite enjoyed his stuff. Really knows his, really knows his stuff. If you've never seen any of Steve Wallace's videos, really worth checking out. He's an absolute, he's a Canadian chap. I mean, he does cold weather camping. I mean, we're talking minus 30 in the snow and it's oh, bonkers. And lots of stealth camping, crazy stealth camping stuff. And then a couple to finish with that, that I've, I do find really good. Uh, Simon, a bloke in the woods, comes across as a really nice bloke. And also Kent Survival, cannot remember his name off the top of my head. He often does a few collaborations with Simon, a bloke in the woods. Anyway, yeah, I just thought I'd mention all those, a few shout outs and stuff. While the fire got a bit more embery, and it's getting there, isn't it? Right, we've got some nice embers going here. It's time to get the Ridge Monkey pans on. Just put a couple of logs on the back there just to keep the fire going because we don't want it to burn out completely. And it also adds a little bit of ambient backlight. <laughs> That's it, it's starting to get a bit of sizzle on. There we go, let's get these flared up a little bit, eh? It's the fun bit, isn't it? Ah, that's getting about ready, isn't it? Yeah, not bad at all. All right, so what was missing last time, perhaps, some might say, was a bit of cheese. So we've got some mature British cheddar. And I'm also going to, add, it's, well, I'm going to hide that because it's not HP and I really like HP and I couldn't get any from my local shop. So I've got co-op brown sauce, but it'll do, it'll do. And then, of course, oh yeah. Yeah. So the cheese is in the Yorkshire. Let's put that about a bit. There we go. So we take that, put that on top of there. And then do the same again. That one on top of there. Squash that in. Needs to be further in, further in. And cook that off for a bit. Oh, now that's hefty. Let's flip it and have a, see how it's doing. Oh, ho, 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 look at that cheese coming out. Yeah. Right, let's give this a, a proper taste test. Oh, definitely going to need baby wipes after this one. That is grand. I thought the first one was good. So good. Just have to wait for those to burn down to embers 
before we can get the oven out. That's right, I said oven. At least I hope it, it turns out to be an oven. <laughs> Gloves for safety. Where the hell did that come from? In here, they've defrosted. They were frozen pan au chocolat, but they're now a little bit defrosted. Here we go to uncooked pan au chocolat in the oven. <laughs> what we'll do is we'll just put the lid on. I'm going to need the gloves for taking this off. We'll put that lid on and then just place that gently on there. And give that about 10, 15 minutes and see what happens. I'm going in. It's definitely uh, steaming the lid. I think in principle, this has worked quite well. Hey, look at that. Fire. So that, the tops are a little bit, uh, as I say, I did have to flip them over, but hey, look at that. Not too bad, eh? A little bit of trial and error because obviously you're cooking over at uh, uncontrolled heat. Okay, proof of the pudding, quite literally, <laughs> and all that. worked yeah a little bit burnt but caramelized sorry caramelized hot chocolate but yeah hot pan au chocolat courtesy of more than just a cleaner and a christmas panettone tin <laughs> winner Well, that's bloody good, isn't it? That wasn't supposed to happen, the cork broke off. Ooh. Not generally a fan of fizzy wine. Put a bit of apple juice in here just to take the edge off. I do find it a bit uh, acidic. But that'll do. Oh, actually, that's really nice. And another thank you to one of my customers for that little treat. Anyway, time to uh, time to be healthy, relatively. Let's just split this open. Oh, there we go. We get you five a day in, right? is kind of lovely well that's the last of the firewood it is 10 to 9 and after that has burnt out I'm gonna head over into that pit <laughs> and see what it's like the good thing is that uh, the tents well fastened down so it should be quite good fire is going to die very soon. I've been on the phone with oldest friend for the best part of an hour. The wine is just about gone. There's just this wee, this wee cupful left. <laughs> and basically when all of that's gone, I'm going to head off into that mesh tent cot situation. I think I'll see you in the morning after this.
There has been quite a bit of rain in the night, but no issues with this tarp. It's done what it's supposed to do. But I've been nice and dry underneath here. Yeah. Kill's boiling. Well, the plan today, I'm spending the rest of the weekend with mum. And I think what I'll do is I'll get packed up, head over to Filey, and en route, see if there's any geocaches I can do en route. Right, that's me all packed up in the car, heading out towards Mum's now. I'm going to stop off at Stamford Bridge, I think, and see if I can get some pies or pasties or something. And then I'm going to do some geocaches on the route back to Filey, on the route through to Filey, I should say. Hope you've enjoyed this little video. If you have, you know what to do. If you don't like it, you know what to do. If you like what I'm doing on the channel, by all means hit the subscribe button. Cost you nothing, just means you get a notification whenever you open up YouTube. If I've, up, uh, if I've uploaded any new content. And I know you like to know. <laughs> All right, you take care of yourself. Cheerio. I'll say, I'll say cheerio, but there might be some stuff after this. There might not. If it suddenly ends now. Mmm, filthy sandwich. Coffee. Filthy sandwich.